Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Dmitry, and I think we can start now. So I'm from a company called Glint, and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, integration and component tests uh, within your microservices or services applications. Now, what we'll cover in this talk is, uh, first we'll look at what test actually is, then uh, we'll look at the different types of tests and their boundaries, and then challenges that you may get um, within your services or microservices architecture. And uh, by then, we'll build a simple uh, test environment where you can create different integrations and um, uh, like for component uh, tests. And the last one will touch briefly on continuous integration and how that can be used together with continuous integration processes. Now, before we jump into the topic, um, I want to give you a little bit of context and explain why at our company we care about tests. Um, so we are a fintech product and uh, we allow people to buy, spend and store gold. And as you can imagine, our customers trust their money um, for us and we take huge responsibility to make sure that their money goes into the right place with the right amount. And um, we also give our customers a payment card and with that our systems uh, should be even more reliable than an average backend because if we don't process a request from MasterCard within 200 milliseconds, then our customer will get a rejected transaction and we need to make sure that our, uh, our application is um, reliable as possible. And we are trying to achieve that uh, with just covering tests and planning for different failures. Now, what a test actually is? Test of a piece of software is um, just passing an input or multiple inputs into it and then get an output of it and see if you get the, uh, what you expected. I deliberately call it as a piece of software because even um, definition of unit test can vary um, either from a function call or class or the whole package uh, within your uh, application. So it also varies on different uh, boundaries that it covers. If you have multiple components in your system, then inputs would be something you, you get either from users or it could be a, a different function calls or RPC calls from other services. Also, if your service makes a call to another service, that could be also considered output and the result uh, can be treated as an input. Um, that becomes especially important if you're dealing with third-party systems because you cannot really know what, uh, what kind of bugs they have and you want to make sure that you handle all the uh, responses and different misbehaviors from their side. Um, However, if, if you want to take that piece of software as, uh, and include multiple services into it, then you wouldn't be interested in internal communications between the services, and you would focus more on input and output to this box that contains multiple services. Or you can also extend your box to cover all the services, and that would be um, even end-to-end -end tests. Um, and where inputs and outputs would be something your users will see. Now, um, with conventional no unit tests, uh, there is a nice metric that is um, uh, code coverage, but um, is it really important for us? Because some developers get really obsessed about getting this number as high as possible. But how difficult would it get 100% coverage of, for example, this kind of program? I think quite easy, but I think 100% will be the chance that it will not do something that you expect. So instead, I think it's more important to make sure that uh, you cover 100% of functionality um, of your components. And um, that functionality can uh, also include cases when something goes wrong. Uh, beyond, your, uh, beyond your control, as I mentioned, with third parties or the components of your system. Um, functionality can also be treated as behavior and can be linked to a BDD approach. However, I think the right 
focus and mentality should be actually on um, covering uh, functionality rather than specific tools or specific format of your tests. So when we go into services or microservices application, uh, there are usually two different approaches that you can take to communicate between services. It's either RPC or event-driven um, communication. And let's look into more details. With RPC, uh, you have uh, tight coupling, and the dependency and the communication flow will be probably dictated by your architecture or even could be explicit um, dependency in your source code. And that is probably the easiest concept. So instead of just function calls, you add a network layer to it. But with event-driven system, you have loose coupling and your services might not even know about existence of your other service. So on this um, example, on this slide, we have push notifications and analytic services. They might not even know about existence of the main service. However, in tests, it's really important to understand this dependency of your communication flow because you still need to treat um, the output of your dependent service um, and compare that with your expected uh, output. Now, when you go outside of the boundaries of your component, uh, which could be your service, microservice, then um, we start getting additional challenges and problems that you may want to cover. So for example, if one of your dependency goes down, then you want to make sure that your main service uh, also doesn't go down. And um, the expected behavior should be that it should just return an error, uh, but not crash. Or if uh, the service just gives you something that you don't expect, as in different protocol, or maybe because of the bug in your uh, service discovery or deployment, you'll just get response from a completely different service. Um, so you also want to test this behavior and plan because this may happen in microservices um, environments. Now, um, let's now re recap on different types of tests. Uh, I'm quite sure that the terminology wouldn't be um, common, but I think that's what makes sense for us. So component tests is a test that cover just single component, which is uh, your service or microservice. Then integration is um, coverage of at least two components or more. Then end-to-end -end is uh, when you don't have any mocks um, and you probably include all your services. And acceptance test is um, already a test that you run on the deployed, deployed environments. Now, there is still place for unit tests. And um, I would leave it only for internal functionality um, of your code, which is not exposed by the public API. Now, um, let's um, try to, to build some environment. Before we start building, I just want to um, note that all the code is shared on GitHub. I'll give you a link later. So there is a working project that contains multiple services implemented in Go. Um, but I will be showing some snippets on these slides just to uh, point the attention to the right places. So uh, hopefully most of you at least have heard of Docker. Um, in this uh, presentation will be using it heavily um, for a few reasons. One would be to pack our uh, services into containers uh, that is easy to run and another one is just to have pre-packaged uh, defined environment for our tests. I also want to mention a few simplifications uh, in this demo uh, just to keep the illustri um, illustrative purpose and focus your attention on the tests and the um, environments. So first we're going to keep all the services in the same repository. Um, then we we will use only RPC, although I will mention later how you can uh, test your uh, queues and event-driven approach as well. And for simplicity of communication, I pick JSON RPC. And for the actual tests, although I mentioned uh, it's not important how you write, but in, in this specific case, uh, 
um, I picked a cucumber, which is BDD style, connected with Ruby. And uh, the implementation of actual services is very simplified. So for example, uh, it doesn't use database, but keeps everything in, me in memory, uh, because it's just not the focus of this demo. Now, we'll be looking at just two microservices. The first one will be API service, which is a service that serves as RESTful API and um, is a gateway into our other microservice. And another one uh, would have the same functionality uh, to create a user, potential user, and get a list of all the users. And uh, they will communicate with each other through JSON RPC. Now, uh, the behaviors for the RESTful API is when we create user would be, for example, successful creation, um, if we have registered user already with the same email, we just um, return an error, and if we get invalid uh, request, or when something goes wrong, so for example, when user service is, uh, is just done. So in this case, component test will cover just that part, and will uh, test the different scenarios when um, we try to communicate with user service. And the integration test, in our case, would be also an end-to-end -end test, will include both of the services, and uh, will just focus on the final um, behavior. So now let's build those services. I won't be explaining how to write a service in Go, uh, but we'll briefly explain the structure in the sample repositories that I was using and how they packaged in Docker. So, First, uh, every service is stored in its own um, uh, folder with, with the same name as the service. Um, as we pick JSON RPC, and it doesn't have reusable structures to define your protocol. So I keep a package called API where I just define uh, structs, but there is no logic at all. It's not um, uh, really required for you, but it's only for, uh, in this case, it was easier. And that's the only package uh, that can be imported from other services. And underneath you'll find your normal Go code and Go packages. And at the bottom, there are two Docker-related files. The last one you're probably familiar is just Docker file, how you're gonna build your image. But the one above is something uh, I want to look at. In this file, we define how we want to package that. Uh, so the, the context of building the image and where we can find the Docker file. And then it just shows, um, specifies the image name, uh, which uh, it should be tagged with. I deliberately put suffix built in it, so we are not tempted to run it as a Docker compose um, and expecting the whole environment ready. And to, to build your image, to get the image with the right name, you just explicitly specify the file name and the build command in it. Now the Docker file is just standard. In this case, there are two phases. One is where we build the actual binary. Uh, it could be also a good place where you want to run your unit tests and go. And the last one is where we rub that, uh, we just isolate the binary and put it in the smallest container. It size a scratch, busy box, alpine, or whatever you prefer. But the idea here is when you do a Docker run, the container should know how to run itself. Um, now let's move on to tests. So every service would have a folder with, uh, called tests, and underneath you will define different integration um, environments in it. The actual scenario in each folder would look like this. So here we have three scenarios written in, in BDD style, which is pretty much uh, plain English. The first one, just normal happy pass for creation of user, and we expect when we get a list of users, we would expect the created user to be there. Um, the second one is uh, just testing on the um, registering the same user, and the last one, just invalid request without email. So if you're not familiar with the DD, BDD, uh, or frameworks with BDD, these steps then connected to your language in the framework, and 
In this case, they are implemented in Ruby. But again, you can write either in Go or other languages. Now, um, under the test set, you would put uh, all the BDD style, all the Cucumber stuff in the features folder. And underneath would be another Docker file, which defines the environment where we are going to, to run the tests. And that's um, usually starts with a container called tests. So we run tests from another Docker container as well. Um, and uh, underneath you define all the dependencies, all the services that you want to include in this integration. Um, if you use some relational database, you would want to spin up your MySQL or Postgres in the same environment. You can also run um, AWS local stack to mock S3 buckets, um, SQS, SNS. Or if you, for example, communicate with um, SMTP server, you can find a Docker image that would provide you just simple SMTP server. Um, and we also define dependencies in which the containers should start uh, in depends on sections. So now we, when we do Docker Compose up, it will start spinning up the containers in the order that we define. So first it will start with user service container, then API service, then tests, and it may actually start running tests. But the problem that we may find is that um, not all the services will be ready by that time when the tests actually will start. So it can take some time to connect to the database, to get uh, initialized, and you will get really flaky results. And the solution for that is to postpone execution of all your tests until your services are ready. To do that, uh, we implement ready checker um, in the actual Ruby tests where we define different rules, how to understand, how to determine whether our environment is in the ready state. So in this example, each service defines an endpoint that just starts responding with successful 200 um, response when, when it's ready. And unless all the checks are um, uh, verified, it doesn't continue, it doesn't progress to executing the actual checks. So apart from checking the URLs um, or checking on specific status code or uh, body of the response, you can also uh, do something like uh, checking on the database connection, whether you can connect to your MySQL or Postgres. You can, um, if you're using uh, different containers to install, for example, your database schema, you may want to monitor uh, whether another container has finished running, which is also possible to do. Now, with integration tests, it was quite easy because we don't use any mocks, and uh, it gets more interesting with component tests. One uh, important thing that we want to cover with component tests is actually dependency to our user service. And you can see that in given, we define the preconditions. The first scenario covers when the other microservice, was, when dependency is completely down. And in that case, we expect API service to still respond something. It would be our uh, 500 uh, status code, but it will not crash. And the second scenario is when the service is broken, meaning just it returns something we don't expect. And again, in, in that case, we, we need to handle it. We need to plan for this kind of behavior. Uh, we can define different um, expected outputs, but in this case, it, it's going to be internal server error as well. Now, because we um, use RPC that goes through HTTP, it's very easy to spin up your mock from uh, your Ruby code. And, um, it's, you, you want to have full control of your mocks from your test, so you can inject any data you want. And um, then the, uh, once you have that, you need to make sure that your API service talks to, to the mock inside of the real service. So you can, you can see in this Docker file for this container, we have just one service, API service, and then we have link, uh, which means that when it wants to talk to user service, it will be redirected to tests container. Now, 
Um, I've included in the code some of the libraries that we use for mocking um, that has wrappers of a standard web server in Ruby. But for example, when you want to define the rule, uh, when your mock is down, you just say stop because you have full control of that. And if you want to redefine behavior, um, you can use monkey patching on the instance of the mock and redefine methods and just raise an error or return like whatever you want to test. Um, I'll quickly jump um, into a very quick demo. So um, you can see um, in the folder we have API service, we have user service, and we have actually a folder called Ruby where we uh, define how our Ruby test container is built. And I wrote a very simple make file that uh, we're going to execute our tests. And the result, first, as you can see, we're running component tests. So it started all the um, containers. Ready checks was saying the API is not ready. And then when it became ready, then it started executing our tests. You can see the actual scenario and some logs from the containers. So you, we can see that API service received the call and um, everything looks green. <laughs> um, then we jump into integration tests, and then you can see that user service now receives the uh, request that we wanted to see. Let me jump back to slides. So, there are a few things um, that you will encounter when you start integrating that with continuous integration. And um, first thing, if you want to run your tests um, in parallel on the same machine, on the same Docker, then you may end up the, uh, having different, um, sorry, the same image name, but on different branches. And uh, then when you run tests, you will not know which version are you actually testing. Um, and the same in your Docker Compose on the test. So to solve that, uh, what I suggest doing is just adding an environment variable, which is optional, and if it's empty, then it will uh, fall back into the latest label in the Docker. But in your uh, continuous integration pipeline, you can generate a unique label string, uh, which could be either your timestamp or whatever you choose. And then when you build in for that specific pipeline, then you will make sure that you test exactly the same images that you built earlier. Another thing, since we're using Docker Compose, is to set this environment variable which defines uh, the name of Docker network and uh, you want to have them um, set to something unique. Otherwise, by default, it, it will just pick the folder name where your uh, Docker Compose is stored. Now, a few things that you would want to avoid writing Docker Compose files in your tests. So first is don't map your ports into the host machine. Again, because you, you will be restricted to just one uh, instance of the tests. And when, when you try to run the second one, it will just say that port is already taken. And also external volumes, just don't use it. Now, in uh, it's... In, in our project in, in Glint, we have around 2,000 tests, uh, integration and components, and it takes about 30 minutes to run all of them. And if you're working on a new feature, then you don't want to wait half an hour on every single commit that you put to your pull request. And ideally, um, you, you want to run only tests that include the services that you modified, that you touched, in, in the feature in your changes. Um, so you would run component and integration tests that include those services. And then just for safety on develop branch, you can run all the tests that you have. You can probably wait 30 minutes there. Um, the solution that we found um, was quite easy is, first, you need to tag the latest um, the stable uh, commit on your develop branch, and then Having that talk, you can find the list of modified files in Git, uh, 
And having good structure in the project, you can then map it to, to the actual uh, components that you touched. And uh, you can also have some uh, white list of uh, components. For example, if you touch something in the Ruby uh, container, then you want to make sure that you rerun all the tests that you didn't break something else. And um, like if you use, for example, bash, uh, you can list all the files that define the environments. And uh, something like YQ would list you all the containers that are used in those Docker files. And then you just simply check whether those integrations contain your modified components or not and run tests um, that, that include the services that you modified. Um, and that works quite well for us and uh, every commit takes usually around five minutes, not more, um, but probably maximum is 10, 10 minutes. Now, a few caveats that I want to mention and that are not covered in the uh, sample repository. So, uh, installing um, database schemas for your relational databases is um, better to wrap that in a container as well. You can use different management, uh, database management tools, one of which we, we found is Quitch. Um, and you can define different steps, and if you, it will keep track of the changes that you installed in your database, and will um, install only the changes in your databases when you add them. And uh, if your database container is shared, like Postgres or MySQL, uh, you want to run those switch containers sequentially to not have the conflict. Now, if you use an AWS, um, there is a local stack um, Docker image, uh, which provides you uh, all the services that uh, Amazon provides with, as I mentioned, um, S3, SQS, SNS, and you connect to them inside of real uh, AWS. And if you're using any third parties, it's better to configure URLs on your dependencies through environment variables. And that way you can easily configure them in your Docker Compose file and again, redirect them into your uh, Ruby or whatever container where you run the tests. And also, to make it easier to create different integrations, it's better to move all the repeated Ruby functions and Ruby steps into separate gems, so you don't have to duplicate that code over and over again. Um, a few ideas to explore uh, from this um, topic is, first, that's something actually what we did in our project. You can generate the coverage of all the API calls that your tests uh, make to your services. So by having a single function that makes a RPC call, you can just track it in files, uh, uh, put it in some volume um, in Docker, and uh, just collect and compare with real functions that you define. Um, another topic we haven't touched is uh, separate repositories uh, where you keep your services uh, separately. I think the, the trickiest problem here would be resolving dependencies to make sure that you run the right version against the right, uh, right version of the test against the right version of your service. Um, it's, we, we haven't done that, but it would be interesting to, to look into that. Now, coming to an end, um, I want to give you the link um, to the repository uh, where you find those services written in Go and the test environment. Um, also, if you have any questions, uh, just feel free to drop me an email. And also wanted to mention that uh, we have a stand here, um, called company called Glint, uh, we're hiring, so uh, feel free to come and talk to us about our product. And yeah, I will open up for questions if you have any.